555. Top five landing spots for Grayson McCall. We didn't get really get a chance to get into this because of uh, Mike Leach and Chris Beard uh, over the last couple of days. But Grayson McCall from Coastal Carolina, a guy who's won a lot of games, is is going into the transfer portal. And that is very interesting. He, I don't know if he would be my number one quarterback in the transfer portal. I mean, would, I don't know if he's going to take over. First for, who would take be? over Devin Leary? But he is maybe my number two right now uh, because of how much this dude has won uh, at Coastal Carolina. The numbers he's put up. Now, I will say this: Liberty is not on this list, and I know that Jamie Chadwell is going there, which would make sense if that happens. You know, color me not shocked, but. I think that he's doing this to raise the level of competition, and Liberty doesn't necessarily do that for him. So, number five, NC State. They're losing Devin Leary. They have a guy that they like, but he is right, uh, you know, he can wait a little bit or whatever. He's from North Carolina. This kind of fits him. That's a good team that can win the conference. They're going to be playing against better competition than he's playing against at Coastal. I think it's a fit in Dave Doran's system. Uh, and, you know, like I said, if Darren Leary's, Devin Leary's number one, he's number two. So that really softens the blow of Devin Leary leaving if you're NC State. Yeah, it seems like uh, those two are he and Leary, uh, 1A, 1B. Now, the guy you're talking about, whatever, that's MJ Morris, and he's just a freshman, and uh, he was looked pretty good in his limited time, and I don't know that NC State's going to go up yeah. in that. So um, I think it's the MJ Morris show now, and maybe I'm wrong on that. Maybe they would like to give him some more time, but that's certainly the vibes you got when Devin Leary was not in action, was mm-hmm. this is going to be the MJ Morris show. And then he enters the transfer portal, and it's like, okay, it's really going to be the MJ Morris show. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, they've, they've got a – a uh, sudden hole to plug unless Morris is that plug. And uh, if they feel that way, then certainly. I mean, McCall, like you said, uh, he's 1A or 1B, depending on how you look at it. So it would only make sense if you lost the 1A guy to go grab the 1B guy or vice versa. By the way, the Regents meeting in California is currently under a protest delay right now. That, that fits which the Which is unrelated to what they're talking about. I guess but... any of the 50 states where that was going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, number four, Florida. Uh, they should be. They should be on every list of who needs a quarterback. Uh, also, uh, Grayson McCall has a mullet. Works in Gainesville very well. Uh, but, uh, no, I think this is this is Billy Napier, Grayson McCall. Uh, Florida's, I mean, they got to get more skilled players around him. The one thing I would keep Florida off this list, the NIL money will be great there. Like everything would be what he wanted, except for the fact that they're in a very transitional period there. So they'd have to also rope in some better skill position players around him uh, to make that more enticing than some of these other schools. But I mean, if they can get him, they can get these other guys and maybe chicken and egg on, on that. How many years does he have left? Just the Just one? Just the one. Okay. Yeah. All right. But Florida needs somebody to be a starter next year and not put them any far further With, behind the eight ball. Because so. they have Rashada and Lagway coming, right? Yeah. 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 They've, they've got time to – to have a, a one-year guy or two. Yeah, and as we see so often, Mike, who are these freshmen that come in and actually play really well right away? Not many. Not yeah. many at all, right? Yeah. Like, hardly any of them do. Like, maybe, like, the premier super blue chip guys, but, like, even, like, you know, Quinn Ewers was pretty good by the end of the year, had, like, a solid debut season, but it wasn't like he was, like, NFL ready and, and all of that. So, yeah, like, Rashad and those guys, they can wait a little bit. I mean, I understand that you can't wait too long in today's uh, day and age of – you know, quarterback depth and in, in the transfer portal. But, yeah, they can wait a year, and you could have a little stopgap. And, and I think Florida would be a great landing spot. That would be a huge get for Billy Napier. I've seen them mentioned quite a bit as a school that would make sense for him because of that very reason is they've got quarterbacks. They just are on the way or they're young right now. So, yeah, I could definitely see him in Gainesville. Yeah. Number three, Oregon. Uh, Going to have to replace Bo Nix. I think uh, skill set's uh, pretty similar. Uh, and this is the place on the West Coast I could really see him going because, again, uh, if you're Grayson McCall and you're trying to check a lot of boxes as you move up this list a little bit, um, and and maybe not necessarily for number one, but I, I do think that it, it bears mentioning, um, but you want teams that can compete and win uh, a little bit more and maybe maybe get some hardware uh, on the way out the door, and Oregon can certainly do that in the Pac-12 uh, in the coming years under under Dan Lanning and 
So I, I would think that this this one fits him as well. And Oregon also, you know, DJU is going to be in the mix for Oregon. He he was committed there before. But if I'm picking between DJU and Grayson McCall, I'm taking Grayson McCall. Who are you picking out of Bo Nix and Grayson McCall? Uh, I, I mean, I'll keep Bo Nix, but I, yeah. I, I tend to think that Bo Nix is going to leave. Okay, but, fair enough. Uh, but if Bo Nix stays, then this is not a this is a non this is a non starter yeah. right here. But I I you know the iron is hot on Bo Nix right now, so sure. I might go ahead and... Yeah, I'm just saying that because it has not been determined just yet on yeah. what he's actually going to do, and there is a chance that, I guess, uh, in theory, he could come back. I know they got some young guys on that roster, too. I'm not sure. I don't know enough about the Ducks and, like, their progression on the young guys to know, like, who's next or who's expected to do what, how soon, and all of that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's entirely hinging upon a Bo Nix decision, but otherwise, it makes sense, and I think Oregon's out on the trail. I've certainly heard rumblings about... with. Um, mm. With uh, what they got going on now, that they are they're very much on the market for a quarterback. Yeah, I mean that they, they have to at least be ready for when Bo Nix makes that decision if it's not the one that they want to hear uh, for sure. Number two, Tennessee. Uh, if Hendon Hooker's going to be gone, uh, look, that's an offense he can step right into. Look, they've they're losing Tillman and Hyatt, yes, but uh, he will be prolific in that o- offense, very prolific. And Hendon Hooker was great this year, and. You know, so you you gave him a Heisman vote, uh, or you he, know, yeah, and, no. and so he he if he was that good in that offense, coming from the lack of experience that he had, what is this guy gonna do? I mean, yeah, I mean that's a uh, that's a quarterback friendly offense, that's for sure. Uh, as we saw when it was a version of it, uh, original version or earlier version of it was being ran in Waco. Um, they could kind of, it seemed like plug and play. And I didn't work with exactly everybody that to where they just, you know, you, you don't skip a beat just by simply getting plugged into it. But uh, yeah, certainly he'd throw for thousands and thousands of yards and uh, you do lose some pretty dynamic playmakers, but Tennessee seems to be paying well and spending in the, you know, NIL game and, and uh, making splashes in the portal, but also with their recruiting class. So I, I don't have any doubts that Josh Heupel is going to have some weapons, uh, you know, whether they are fresh or, you know, aged veterans, they're, uh, they're going to have some some guys to be able to throw the ball around to. I mean, I do wonder with Ayman Liava, like what kind of a, a promise is there as far as, like, is he expected to also sit a year? Um, I don't know, again, uh, uh, enough to, to be able to say for sure. But, yeah, if you just want a guy to come in and throw for a – Billion yards, and Grayson McCall could certainly do that under Josh Heupel. Yeah. And number one, Auburn. I believe he is uh, scheduled to take a visit there, as a matter of fact. I think they might be the favorite. Yeah, they're 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 the favorite right now. And, look, Hugh Freeze is there. Hugh Freeze runs a very quarterback-friendly offense. Uh, that is going to be – well, and if Philip Montgomery, not only that, if I said he's going to be great – in Josh Heupel's offense, well, guess who else is running that offense? Philip Montgomery, the new offensive coordinator at Auburn. This is a great fit for him scheme-wise. Uh, look, Hugh Freeze has probably been given a blank check by a lot of uh, Auburn people to get a lot of this stuff done uh, because they are, you know, they've been a couple years of behind the not only the Alabama eight ball, which they – we're always behind, but the rest of the SEC eight ball, Auburn is sitting behind right now, and that's why they brought in Hugh Freeze. This is the favorite. This is the one I, I think is probably going to happen, but uh, not only just because of all those other things outside of it, great scheme fit for Grayson McCall and can get them a bridge, bridge the gap a little bit so that Philip Montgomery and Hugh Freeze can get the quarterback in there for the long term that they want. Yeah, I, I still wonder if if I you know you said why well, you don't have Liberty on here. I definitely think they've got to be in consideration uh, just because of the Chadwell connection. But uh, he is visiting Auburn this weekend, it appears. Um, and I mean, they've they've shown that they're willing to do whatever it takes to win. I mean, that's why they hired Hugh Freeze, right? I mean, they, they're they're making no bones about their desire to shake things up. And uh, they've now gone and made a couple splashes with their coordinator hires. I mean, I don't know how much of a splash Ron Roberts is or, or Philip Montgomery for that matter, but we know them pretty well. And so to us, those are splashes. Like those are two really good coaches that he's hired. But Montgomery is an OC is an absolute freaking steal. And I don't know how everybody allowed Hugh Freeze to be able to get him as his OC. Like how he was just sitting out there uh, before Freeze came calling. And maybe he wasn't. Maybe there were people that were interested and he just wasn't interested until the right opportunity came, which was Auburn. But yeah, Philip Montgomery with Hugh Freeze and uh, and Grayson McCall at the helm and, and whatever else they end up doing in the portal. That would be that'd be pretty scary stuff on offense. I mean, that'd be pretty pretty dynamic. Okay, I'm surprised. I wonder if there was any contact between Auburn and Randy Clements. 
I, I, I wonder. With Montgomery I don't know, but you don't there. always keep the band together no, all the time. No, you know? I, I know, but I just was one. If the, I, I just asked if there was contact, you wonder because he's a part of that offense that they will be running. But in high school, uh, if if I was if I was Randy, I'd rather go work for the North guy I'm Carolina, about to go work yeah. for than yeah. Hugh Freeze. Yeah, yeah. Then, no, I that's mean, a great point. yeah. I mean, look, Mac if Brown, I'm Randy, I'm just glad I'm getting look, another opportunity. Hey, but if if Mac Brown calls me, I, I'd love to work. I mean, I, I'd love to work for Mac Brown. By the 